It's time now for French Connections, our weekly look at the intricacies of life here in France with our very own Florence Villeneuve. Hey, Hi, Flo. France, obviously famous for many things, for fashion, for food, but perhaps surprisingly also for skiing. And today you're going to focus on that French institution that's known as Les Sports d'Hiver or winter sports. Well, France does have the reputation of being one of the top winter sports destinations in the world. It has, of course, pristine alpine landscapes and dramatic uh, landscapes in the Pyrenees as well. And there's a lot of diversity to offer for all sorts of sports, skiing, snowboarding, uh, long distance skiing, etc. And there are even some places where you can ski in the summer. So it does have a lot to offer. Uh, now, the first resorts opened in France at the beginning of the 20th century. And these days, uh, there are about 350 resorts in seven mountain ranges. So the most famous ones are perhaps the Alps of, you know, the Northern Alps, the Southern Alps, the Pyrenees, the Jura. But you can also ski on the island of Corsica. Mm. Now, uh, winter sports are definitely part of the French psyche. Uh, they get a lot of coverage in the media, for instance. There are constantly news stories about whether there's too much snow or not enough snow or avalanches. You always know what's happening in the mountains. Now, as you say, skiing really is part of the French psyche, but the truth of the matter is it's, it only concerns a very privileged part of, of French people. Indeed, less than 10% of French people hit the slopes each year, and that's because it's expensive. You have to pay for transport, accommodation, equipment, a ski pass. It really adds up. You can see here, this is the average uh, price of a week of winter sports for a family of four. That's about 3,200 euros. That's roughly the equivalent of three months of the minimum wage. Though do keep in mind, prices really vary according to where you go skiing. And it is surprising because despite that incredibly high price, skiing is still a huge business here. And that's thanks in part to foreign tourists who represent about 30% of the 10 million people who visit French ski resorts each winter. Now, winter sports account for about 18% of France's tourist economy, which is quite big, and about 120,000 jobs are created in resorts during the winter. But uh, increasingly, the ski season is unpredictable uh, because of global warming. It means that uh, snow comes later and leaves earlier, and it means that the ski business is really tricky. And so it means that a lot of people who work in the business count on the month of February. There's usually snow in February, and that's also when there's a national school holiday. We're always happy when there's white gold. It means we can work properly. The February vacation is very short, but it represents 25% of our annual revenue, so it's important to be successful. If there isn't any snow at the beginning of the season, we can't make it up. We try to limit our losses when it snows in February. It represents three quarters of our seasonal earnings, a lot's at stake. Flo, you mentioned school holidays before, and just to remind our viewers, uh, from primary school through high school, French kids get two weeks vacation every six weeks, including two weeks in February or March, so that means for families who can afford it, skiing is a traditional annual holiday. That's right, and fortunately, French schools are separated into three geographical zones, so it doesn't mean that everyone is on the slopes at the same time, but it can get really busy. Now, many French kids take ski lessons, uh, classe de neige, from the ESF, that's the École du Ski Français, uh, and if you've ever been to France and been skiing, you've definitely seen one of their 14,000 instructors who wear these uh, su these red uh, ski suits and are usually very suntanned. And if you know anything about French people, you know that they're quite obsessed with exams and ranking, and that goes for skiing as well. You can uh, see some of the ski levels that these uh, kids try to, to achieve every year. It starts with Piu Piu for very young kids. It goes through Ourson, Flocon, the snowflake, uh, then the first star, the second star, the, the bronze star, the gold star, and it goes on. It's a little bit like the baccalaureate of the skis, and and if you succeed, you get you get one of these little medals that you can pin on your ski suit. And it can be a little stressful for kids, though some are often confident as well. I'm a pro. We teach various skills throughout the week. It's true that the star is kind of a rite of passage, and some of them get a little bit stressed. But the idea is for them to have fun and learn, because it's holidays after all. Did you think you'd get it? No. Sometimes on D-Day, the day of the test, kids get stressed out and they fail their exam.
Oh, those poor little French ski kids. They are awfully cute, but stressed out at times. Another thing that French people obviously are obsessed with is food. And fortunately, there are some wonderful ski dishes that people can eat up in the mountains. And it's funny because some of these traditional French ski dishes are actually Swiss to start <laughs> with. But uh, uh, they uh, have been, some might say, improved in France. And a lot of them include cheese. French people, of course, are obsessed with cheese. Now, favorites include raclette, where you mm. scrape melted cheese on potatoes. Fondue, of course, where you you dip a piece of bread into uh, melted cheese, uh, often with white wine. You have to be very careful not to lose your piece of bread or else uh, you get a dare. That might include running around in the snow naked in certain <laughs> families. Uh, and then there's my personal favorite, that's tartiflette. It's essentially baked potatoes and cheese. It's definitely part of the ski experience. It's impossible to go skiing and not eat fondue. It's the symbol of the holiday. This is real raclette, not the cheap kind you get in Paris. We start out slow, ski for an hour and spend a lot of time at the table. It's not excessive. You just have to prepare yourself for two weeks. Now we have to work it off. So delicious, you can't forget all of that ham and bacon that goes with that cheese too, which explains why a lot of people gain weight when they go skiing, despite all the exercise. There's just too much to eat. I definitely gain weight whenever I go skiing, but it does help you get down the mountain faster, which leads to our word du jour, tout schuss. This is an expression that people use when they go skiing. It actually comes from the German word schuss, which is a word for a shot, uh, a gunshot, essentially. Uh, but it also, uh, in French, means to zoom downhill. Tout schuss means you're going really fast down the hill. Now, if you want to immerse yourself into the French ski experience, but you can't go to the French mountains. There's a movie that you can watch uh, that you will really definitely describe what it's like to go skiing in France. It is Les Bronzés Fonds du Ski, a French classic. And if you go skiing with French people, they're bound to quote it at one point. Now, this is a film from the 1970s, 1979 to be exact, but it's still very relevant today. And very funny. Thank you so much for that, France Villeneuve, for that look at the French obsession with skiing and the mountains. Don't forget, if you have any other questions about anything French you might not understand, you can always send a tweet to, to Flo, at Flo Villeneuve.